Hi there! There are another 5 tricky riddles which you should try to solve. You can pause any time you want. Let's get it on! After visiting my great aunt Annie, I traveled home in her old jalopy. The car was old and battered, it had a leak from the petrol tank, and I was stuck in second gear. This meant that I could only travel along at a steady 30 miles per hour and managed a paltry 20 miles per gallon of fuel. At the start of the journey, I had placed exactly 10 gallons of fuel into the tank. I knew though that the fuel tank lost fuel at the rate of half a gallon per hour. Just as I arrived home, the car stopped because it had run out of fuel and I had only just made it. How far was it from my great aunt's house to my home? Answer: 150 miles. I was traveling at 30 miles per hour at a rate of 20 miles per gallon. So I was using 1.5 gallons per hour for the driving itself. I was also losing 0.5 gallons every hour, so in total, I was using 2 gallons every hour. Therefore, to use all the 10 gallons I started with, I traveled for 5 hours. 5 hours at 30 miles per hour is 150 miles. A rich old lady died left her money to her grandchildren and her children. At the end of the will, she stated that she had one last thing to give away, her precious diamond. She gave a clue to where it might be. She said it's in a cylinder surrounded by a thousand squares. One grandchild said, I know where it is and found it. Where was it? Answer: In a roll of toilet paper. Each of the clues below describe the name of a candy. Can you name them? Example: Galaxy would be a Milky Way. Sign of affection. Favorite day for working people. Can't hold on to anything. Famous swashbuckling trio. Sun explosions. Answer. Sign of affections would be kisses. Favorite day for working people would be payday. Can't hold on to anything would be butterfingers. Famous swashbuckling trio would be the three musketeers. Sun explosions would be starbursts. A rich man's son was kidnapped. The ransom note told him to bring a valuable diamond to a phone booth in the middle of a public park. Plainclothes police officers surrounded the park, intending to follow the criminal or his messenger. The rich man arrived at the phone booth and followed instructions, but the police were powerless to prevent the diamond from leaving the park and reaching the crafty villain. What did he do? When the rich man reached the phone booth, he found a carrier pigeon in a cage. It had a message attached telling the man to put the diamond in a small bag, which was around the pigeon's neck, and to release the bird. When the man did this, the police were powerless to follow the bird as it returned across the city to its owner. 
During a visit to the mental asylum, a visitor asked the director what the criteria is that defines if a patient should be institutionalized. Well, said the director, we fill up the bathtub, then we offer a teaspoon, a teacup, and a bucket to the patient and ask the patient to empty the bathtub. Oh, I understand, said the visitor. A normal person would choose the bucket as it is larger than the spoon. What was the director's response? The director answered, no, a normal person would pull the plug. A farmer and his neighbor once went to the emperor's court with a complaint. Your Majesty, I bought a well from him, said the farmer pointing to his neighbor, and now he wants me to pay for the water. That's right, Your Majesty, said the neighbor. I sold him the well, but not the water. The emperor asked an advisor to settle the dispute. How did the advisor solve the dispute? The advisor asked the neighbor, didn't you say that you sold your well to this farmer? So the well belongs to him now, but you have kept your water in his well, is that right? Well, in that case, you will have to pay him rent or take your water out at once. The neighbor quickly apologized and gave up his claim. You are on your way to visit your grandma, who lives at the end of the valley. It's her birthday and you want to give her the cakes you've made. Between your house and her house, you have to cross seven bridges. And as it goes in the land of make-believe, there is a troll under every bridge. Each troll, quite rightly, insists that you pay a troll toll. Before you can cross their bridge, you have to give them half of the cakes you are carrying. But, as they are kind of trolls, they each give you back a single cake. How many cakes do you have to leave home with to make sure that you arrive at grandma's with exactly two cakes? Answer, two cakes. At each bridge, you are required to give half of your cakes and you receive one back, which leaves you with two cakes after every bridge. A man worked for a high security institution and one day he went to work only to find out that he could not log into his computer terminal. His password wouldn't work. Then he remembered that the passwords are reset every month for security purposes. So he went to his boss and they had this conversation. Hey boss, my password is out of date, said the man. Yes, that's right. The password is different, but if you listen carefully, you should be able to figure out the new one. It has the same amount of letters as your old password, but only four of the letters are the same. With that, he went and correctly logged into his station. What was the new password? The old password was out of date. Answer. The new password is different. The man said, my password is out of date. And the boss told him the new one when he said, the password is different. And now, the logic riddle. Look at this picture and guess, who of them is a serial killer? The killer is this cute grandpa. British serial killer Harold Shipman, who worked in England as a medical doctor and killed over 200 of his patients before his arrest in 1998. This flower math problem is said to have come from a Chinese test for five-year-olds. After it was posted online, it created a huge debate as people could not agree upon the correct answer. Can you figure it out? Give it a try, then I'll explain the correct answer.
To get started, you want to look very closely at the pictures. In the very last equation, the first picture shows one yellow flower. This is not the same as the equation before, which has two yellow flowers. Now look at the blue flower in the last equation. There are four petals on this flower. In all the other blue flowers, there are five petals. Arguably, these differences mean the very last equation cannot be evaluated. However, we can try to assign a consistent value with all the other information in this problem. Let's try and do that. The first equation has three red flowers, which equals 60. This means one red flower is equal to 20. The next equation has a red flower plus two blue flowers, which equal 30. We can use the value of 20 for the red flower, and then we have 20 plus two blue flowers with five petals equal to 30. We subtract 20 from both sides, so we have two blue flowers with five petals equaling 10. If we count each petal as a value of one, we have a total of 10 blue petals. So, we can assign a value for a blue flower as saying it's equal to one per petal. The next equation has a blue flower with five petals, minus two yellow flowers equals to three. We can assign the blue flower with five petals a value of five. We then are subtracting two yellow flowers to be equal to three. This means that each yellow flower has a value of one. Now we'll use this information to try and evaluate the last expression. The yellow flower will replace with the value of one. The red flower will replace with the value of 20. And the blue flower with four petals will replace with the value of four. We have one plus 20 times four. 20 times four is equal to 80 and add one to get our answer of 81. Did you figure it out? Write your answer in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.